Hello, welcome to Storytime episode one. Today I've decided to share one of my more embarrassing stories and it actually happened later in life in my 30s. I did try and think back to childhood, high school, middle school, what may have been the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me in my life and it actually I would have to say was this event that happened when I was I think 33. Now I am a very introverted person. I would consider myself to be shy. I think I'm outgrowing it a little bit as I get older, but I'm definitely very modest. And this is just to preface this story so you can get an understanding of why this might have been so embarrassing. <laughs> um, I'm not one to, um, if we go to the nude beach, for example, with friends, I never take off my swimsuit. It's just, I'm totally fine with other people being nude, but it's just not something I'm comfortable with myself. Um, if I'm in a dressing room or a change room at the gym, I tend to go into the bathroom to change, or I will change like in the corner with the locker and open in front of me to hide my body. It's just something that I've always been like since I was young. I'm just not so uncomfortable being naked. Even in my own home, I will kind of run from one room to the other with a towel wrapped around me, that sort of thing. Okay. So this story happened, as I mentioned before, in my mid thirties. I'm 35 now, but I was 33 then. And I had decided to enter a bodybuilding competition. So if you Scroll back in my YouTube channel, you'll see a whole series. I documented my bodybuilding training experience. Um, it was a 16 week training experience where I dieted and trained and worked out every single day. My show was at the end of March. I began my training with a coach at the beginning of December of the year before. So it was almost four months of just focused on this goal. So during that time, I definitely I've never done a show in my life. I've never been in that um, environment before. It was something that I decided to do after I'd been playing roller derby and done a lot of other sports. I felt like this was something that I was ready to do. I also just wanna preface this by saying that I don't feel like I embarrassed that easily, even though I am shy and introverted. I mean, I've walked into plate glass windows in public. I've, you know, I have stories of peeing my pants uh, and I just choose not to let things like that embarrass me. I just kind of like plow right through those experiences and I embrace and accept it. I actually enjoy a lot laughing at myself. I'm definitely a huge klutz and there's probably small stories every day of dumb, stupid things I've done that are kind of funny. I've had birds fly into my head in the street. You know, I had a cat attack me and Bruce one day when we were walking, just weird stuff like that happens all the time. I love to share those stories. So here we are, I'm 33, embarking on my bodybuilding competition. And throughout that process, I will have to say it is definitely so hard. You have to essentially starve yourself slowly over time. I was just eating less and less food and I was working out more and more and more. So let me tell you, it does get quite miserable quite early on in the process. It was very difficult. Um, when you're hungry or starving, you your mood is not the best. And I honestly had the goal of competition day in my mind as the thing that kind of kept carrying me through. Every night when I went to bed starving and miserable, I would think about competition day and like having my hair and my makeup done, wearing my beautiful sparkly suit, you know, walking out onto the stage, feeling like a million dollars, like showing off all the hard work. So I would envision that every night before I went to bed to kind of get me through every gym workout I did. I just kept thinking about competition day, competition day. That's going to be the best day. It's going to be so worth it, all this sacrifice. So I really planned out my competition day as well. I, like I said, I'd never done a competition before and it was out of town. So I booked a hotel that I could stay at the night before. Um, and get ready there. I booked a makeup artist to come do my makeup for me because I wanted to look my very best. I did my own hair, um, but other than that, I felt like I was very, very prepared. So let me tell you how, how competition day went. 
the night before I arrived at the hotel. At this point, I'm in a mindset of it's happening. I'm very excited, but also obviously very super nervous. And I'm, and I need to add this little note in as well is that I'm a very anxious person. And also anytime I've ever played sports in my entire life or done a speech or had to go in front of a classroom to do a project, anything like I always have to go to the bathroom. It's, I call it anxiety. I have to go to the, I have to pee no matter what, even if I've peed 12,000 times and stopped drinking water for like three hours prior to whatever I'm doing, I still will have to go to the bathroom. So just think about that. So the night before we have to go to this big conference room and show the judges our competition suits so that they can kind of sign off that they're like legal and appropriate and everything like that. I forgot to add one more thing. Hold on. So if you've ever watched a bodybuilding competition before, you've probably noticed that everybody that goes on stage gets a absolutely insane, crazy spray tan. And even leading up to my show when I would be training and stuff like that, I got advised by my coaching team that I should be fake tanning and prepping to get as dark as I could on top of getting a spray tan. So I did do the fake tanning in a tanning bed, very smart. We don't need to go any deeper than that. And then on the day, the spray tanning was also at the same hotel where I booked the night to stay and had my makeup artist coming and everything. So I thought I was like really on top of things. So when I arrived at the hotel the day before, I was supposed to get a spray tan the night before and then the day of in the morning, go back and get any touch-ups. I've never had a spray tan in my entire life. And if you've never had a spray tan in your entire life, then you will understand my surprise when I went to go there as soon as the first thing I did when I got to my hotel was I unpacked my stuff and I went to get my spray tan I had a, an appointment scheduled um, I imagined in my mind that the spray tan would be that I would go into a room a single room with a single woman wearing like one of maybe those paper bikinis like just like something there to cover my bits and I was like already mentally preparing myself for that. I was like, that's fine. It's going to be like a woman and she does this all the time. And I'll have like, they'll give me like some stickers or something. And I'm just going to have to close my eyes and just like get through it. Because I definitely was not comfortable with the idea, but knew it had to be done. So when I walk down to where we're supposed to go, I find out that it's actually going to be in a huge room with a bunch of tents and a bunch of women and all the other people that are competing and you're just gonna walk in strip down completely naked in front of an absolute stranger and a bunch of other strangers that are all around stand arms out legs out and just let them go to town spraying every inch of your naked body and i had to digest that information in like you know five seconds and what do you do? At this point, I've come this far, I'm not gonna let a spray tan be the thing that makes me not complete this thing. But it absolutely, in my mind, was the most horrifying nightmare situation I could have ever imagined in my life. I was horrified. But I went, I did it, and I will tell you this. And this isn't the most embarrassing part. The, the nice girl who was spraying me She's spraying me, spraying me, spraying me. And she actually said to me, because I'm from a small town and the show was in a smaller town. It wasn't in Vancouver. Um, and she actually said to me, she's like, you look familiar. Dude, where, where did you go to school? I'm naked. Naked. I just was like, in my, I was like, no, I don't know. I don't know where I went. Nope. I didn't move here. Nope. I don't know. And I just didn't, I just couldn't, I couldn't go there. So then you got to go stand in another tent with a bunch of other women all naked while you dry. You have to dry. And then I got to go back to my hotel room and prepare to go downstairs to the conference room for kind of like the welcome ceremony and also to get my suit judged like I mentioned before and all that. So I get back to my hotel room and I have to pee. And I actually did do some research about this because what they had said and what you learn about spray tans is that urine is actually like a paint thinner to spray tans 
I watched a lot of YouTube videos from other competitors who competed, who would share that kind of information. So I was like, okay, I got this. There's tricks. You can layer the toilet with toilet paper on the bottom so you don't get a backsplash. You can line it with the saran wrap um, so that you don't stain the seat if you're at a hotel. I chose the option of just like hover. I'm, I've hovered all my life in strange bathrooms. So I felt like I could definitely handle a hover. And I put some toilet paper down below in case there was any like spray up. And I knew I only had to go like a teeny tiny bit. So it was just like anxiety. I just had to pee because I had to go down with a bunch of strangers and I was freaking out. And I just come back from the most horrifying experience of my life. So I go into the hotel bathroom, I hover, I dribble into the toilet, and then I stand up to blot, to, to wipe, and I feel this droplet cascade down my leg. And let me tell you, I, I definitely didn't think it was possible to pee on yourself, considering I've gone my whole life to this point without peeing on myself. So when I got the spray tan and they talked about pee and all that, I was like, well, just don't pee on yourself. Be careful around the toilet, you'll be fine. First thing I do is manage to pee on myself. And as that little dribble rolled down my thigh, all the way down my calf to my ankle, a white line followed. The spray tan just was, and I, I, I literally was so fast, it was minus seconds. I took some toilet paper, I started blotting down my leg, and there was a white line on my like super dark brown tanned skin. You could absolutely see that it was a pee line because it came from my crotch down to my ankle. And now I have to go downstairs and do this like meet and greet thing. So I know in my mind, I'm already thinking like, okay, I can get the touch up in the morning. I'm already going to have to tell the person in the morning that I peed on myself. And I'm so, I'm so effing embarrassed. But again, just rolling with it, rolling with it. I got to go down to do the thing. So I put on some sweatpants. I have my bathing suit in my hand because I'm like, I'm just going to show the judges my suit. They can see what it is. I go down there as we're sitting there while the people are welcoming and talking to us, they inform us that we have to be wearing our suits so that the judges can see. And we have to actually walk up in a line in our suits and have them look at us. So now I'm thinking the entire room is going to see that I have a pee stain on my leg. So I have to go into a bathroom where all these women go running into that also don't have their suits on and have to also now get naked and put my suit on in a room like three feet away from other women. Again, I'm like having an out of body experience at this point. Change, go back in there. I put my pants back on because I'm like, at least I can keep them on until like the last second. And then, you know, my day will come. So I kept my pants on, go on the line, get to the judge, and I actually just scoop my pants down to my knees so they can see my suit. And they accept it. So whew, relief, sweet, sweet relief. So then I go back to my hotel room, finish off like the rest of my evening, basically just eating like grilled chicken and rice, starving, freaking out and try and go to sleep. And now I'm also supposed to be drinking water and I don't wanna drink water because I don't wanna to have to pee anymore because I'm just done with peeing at this point, but you have to because you're trying to like get as rip looking as you can and get all the fluids out. And I was on actually diuretics to make me pee more in the last few days before my show. So as my body is like wanting to pee constantly and my brain is like not wanting to pee at all ever again in my entire life. So that was the battle I dealt with all night long. I definitely added to the, the, the stain <laughs> throughout the evening. It was really hard. So then I go back in the first thing in the morning to get my pee stain fixed. And I just have to be honest, I have to get completely naked again. At this point, I think I was just a shallow, like hollow version of myself, just like a shell of a human. And I just took my clothes off and I told the girl, it was the same girl, I said, yep. Yeah, had, and she was she was very sweet and was just like oh it's very calm it happens a lot and she actually had to take like a buffer buffer sponge thing 
and really start rubbing in my thigh and trying to buff out the pee stains that are all over my legs. And I stood there thinking, this is what I, this is what I, this, this is what I've been waiting for for 16 weeks. This is why I've been eating green beans, and broccoli, and white fish, and not going out and not drinking and not seeing friends and not going to birthday parties. I didn't celebrate Christmas or my birthday or New Year's just for this moment. So yeah. Um, after that, I went got my hair and makeup done, went down to the show. I came up with this strategy that moving forward from then about peeing where I don't know if it's TMI but I just basically since I had I had to pee so little at that point I would just like take a big ball of toilet paper and pee into it and throw it into the toilet um but yeah so that was all pretty awful and it really didn't get any better from there because when I got to the venue where I had to sit downstairs we were, it was basically like a theater and they had saran wrap the entire basement of the theater where kind of where actors would get ready, but they actually crammed everybody that was in this bodybuilding show, men, women, all ages, all categories, down into the basement. And I just had to sit on a towel on the floor and not smudge my tan and wait for advice about whether I could eat Gatorade or a rice cake or a, or a chocolate bar or whatever it was. Go out there for 10 seconds, flex, flex, flex. Um, and as I was going up to leave, they there's a morning show and there's an evening show. And in the morning, they just kind of let the judges see you. Nobody's there watching, no friends, no, no audience. And they do their judging then. And then in the evening show, you go back out, do your thing, but you've already been judged. And then they give the awards. So in the morning show, they... The, as I'm going out, as I'm getting ushered to go out into the stage, they tell me that they need to... Uh, glue my bathing suit to my butt which is also something I wasn't too familiar with at that point and uh, so that it didn't like ride up my butt while I was out there so they took a spray glue sprayed my my butt stuck it to that and then I realized after that when they do that it takes off your spray tan completely so I had to go back and get that fixed <laughs> and yeah then I the show happened and you know you can watch my my show day video to actually see how that kind of went but I definitely decided that morning before I even walked on the stage that I would never ever do this again <laughs> ever so that's one of my most embarrassing stories. I still, I look back at it now and I can laugh. I would never want to ever do that again. Uh, I don't know if I'm glad that I did it. I don't think I needed to have that experience in my life, but I have it. And I definitely can empathize and understand more of what those competitors go through. I had a lot of respect for them, especially ones that are telling me it's their fifth show, their sixth show. You know, I was, it was my first show and I was like, yeah, I'm never doing this again, ever. So that's a lovely story from my bodybuilding competition experience. Like I said, you can look at the whole 16 weeks I documented and made a video a week following that journey if you ever want to check it out. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you next video.